Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on this video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing some solo riding and some solo camping in the St. Joe River area as well as uh, Panhandle National Forest. And this section that I'll be riding is actually on the Idaho BDR. It will be hanging out between Avery and Wallace. Avery is a super cool town and we've got some cool train tunnels to go through and just some really cool scenery. So sit back relax and just enjoy. of Avery, historic railroad town of the Milwaukee Railroad. This is literally old, an old jail. There's a museum here. And then up on the hill is the ranger station that I just passed. But yeah, this was a booming town back in the old mining days. And this uh, railroad was basically what kept the town alive. Let's go take a look at it. It's a little museum. Lots of stuff about the railroad. spot little bathroom it's kind of tight sink just be a toilet there come around this corner nice little seating area with all these tables you can imagine the people that were in here this was probably like the first class car mining and logging just huge back then it's a cool old bar right here I mean thousands of miles this car has been Washington over into Idaho, Montana. Cool little kitchen. back of the car pretty cool if you get a chance to do the idaho bdr definitely stop here in avery and check it out it's worth a worth a stop
this turn off right here is all, it's part of the Idaho BDR heading north between Avery and Wallace. Wallace is 30 miles. This is a pretty cool little section because it's got a ton of uh, train tunnels, well I say a ton, about six train tunnels to go through. As well as uh, goes along the river, so it's pretty neat. The river's high from all the runoff and the snow. This is one of my favorite areas to ride, it's just gorgeous. If I just want to get away and enjoy some scenery, this is one of my favorite places to go. I'm sure there will probably still be some people out here from Memorial Day. But there's a ton of roads out here that I've never ridden before, so I'm just going to kind of explore and have you guys come along with me to see what we can find. Got one of the first tunnels coming up. This section of the BDR actually has two ways you can go. There's this way up up high, and there's also a road down below that goes along the river. There's the road down there, the second road. Another tunnel coming up. by myself I'm definitely gonna take it easy the whole goal today is to show you guys some of the area that I like to ride I mean if you look back at that that's just if you're not from somewhere that's got mountains or very much terrain features coming out here to North Idaho I think you would be pleasantly surprised how gorgeous it is
bits open just to maybe keep that in mind for later here's that cool trestle bridge I just went over Nice little flat spot for the tent. You got some fishing available. Pretty cool. Maybe we'll come back here later. All the butterflies must be a hatch. Another really neat bridge. I'm a sucker for bridges. Especially old ones. It doesn't look like it's closed. Oh, yeah, it does actually. Bummer. I think they have it closed for the whole COVID thing. Even though Idaho is open, the Forest Service is obviously federal, so.
which is basically a 18 mile trail along that same railhead. You'll see now that we're going off of it. And you can ride through multiple tunnels, one of which is over two miles long. Pretty cool. soon well I'll push a little further like I said this is not really something I want to deal with today also with this AT putting the uh, bike and traction control on level 2 does really good in the snow the snow is very slushy right now That's 
not good. Man. Yeah, there's still snowmobile tracks. Well, I definitely don't want to deal with that right now. Somebody's been through with a bunch of tree limbs and stuff like that in a vehicle, it looks like. I could probably make it. But that's a lot more work than I want to do. So, let's just enjoy the scenery on the way back down. I like going up way more than I like going down because you got momentum not in your favor going down. I get questions all the time about riding techniques and I'm by no means a pro but if you look over here at my brake hand I use one finger on the brake that way I don't grab it and wash out the front even though it has ABS in the front you can still very well if it kicks in hard enough lose the front end and over on my clutch side I use two fingers mainly because I just have a little bit better control that way. If it's really, really finicky, then sometimes I'll use uh, one finger, but most of the time, two fingers is all I use. So two in my left hand with my clutch side, one with my brake side. And that way I just have full control whenever I'm going over little obstacles and stuff and I'm not using my whole hand because if I, get, if I catch a bump or a, a rock, I still have three good fingers to hold on to. It doesn't seem like much, but over here on my brake side, I've got four. So that's just how I do it. Some people do one and one, some people do two and two, but I'd highly suggest not doing any more than two on each because then you lose fingers to hold on handlebars in case you need to hold on. Also, when it comes to holding on, I don't really hold on to the handlebars. I can't remember if it was Jimmy Lewis. God, you know, I'm sorry if I don't quote the right person, but I was told one time that handlebars are just to rest your hands there. Like this is all gravelly, right? But I mean, with the right balance, yeah, you can, it doesn't really matter too much. The bike's gonna want to go straight. And my what I'm my reason for showing you that is that you don't have to death grip the handlebars. You just have to kind of gently grab them. If you're familiar with like a golden retriever or a, a Labrador, you know, they're hunting dogs and they have very soft mouths. So when it comes down to holding on to the handlebars. Just think of having soft hands. That'll really reduce wrist or arm pump and wrist fatigue. And it also keeps you from getting your balance thrown off because if the handlebars do this real bad, you're not just fighting it. You kind of let the bike do what it wants to do. And then you counter steer with your feet. A lot of off-road riding is done with the feet. So if you see me right now, we're talking, I've got fingertips. And this is not smooth terrain. I'm not even really technically holding on. I'm just resting my fingers there and rolling down the hill. And I'm steering 
by adding pressure right or left. In the future, I plan on doing some kind of instructional videos, but like I said, I'm no, by no means a pro. It's just things that I've learned over time and the training schools that I've gone to and stuff like that to get me where I am today. I haven't been riding dirt bikes and stuff like a lot of people have their whole lives. I've only been riding since my early 20s for the most part. I mean, I, I did when I was younger a little bit, but I didn't really own a, a big adventure bike or a dirt bike before then. So about, I've been riding probably about 16, 17 years, I guess. feeling that the peak that I wanted to go to is going to be blocked. to go through here but it looks like it's gonna get up to over 6,000 feet and it's gonna stay down in the shady area for a while so I don't think this is gonna be the last time I hit snow part of me wants to try it but I can definitely tell that that's several inches deep in some of those places and I just don't know if I want to deal with that right now <laughs> I didn't get it on video but I got off the bike and then I thought, oh, I'll just go straight. Rolled pretty easy. Well, I made it about five feet and sank down to the skid plate. So then I had to lay the bike over, spin it around. Now we're gonna go find some camp, I think.
made it to camp. Back to the same place, but this place is gorgeous. I love it. I've stayed here with my daughters, my wife on our anniversary. It's just, it's just a special spot. Let's set up camp. Got my tent here with my climate air mattress. It's the Static V Lux. It's the non-insulated version. I really like it, but I actually just ordered a new sleeping or a new uh, sleeping pad that I'll show you the next uh, couple days. It actually comes tomorrow in the mail, and I won't be home until tomorrow evening. But I got my Nemo sleeping bag that I just did a review on. If you've seen that, I'll throw my rain fly on later. Just to make sure I don't get a heavy dew tonight. Got my little pad here, my camp chair, my cooking equipment, got some food in my bags. Somebody built a nice little fire pit here. I got my, my beers chilling there in my little cooler that I made. No way they can come out and the river is probably about 40 degrees, if not colder than that. Ooh. So, this is the St. Joe River. Ooh, we just saw a fish pop. I'm about to do some fishing. I'm about to do some fishing here in a minute. So there's the train trestle bridge. And I put this log across because I pulled in here and haven't really seen very many people at all today. And as soon as I pull in here, in here and start getting my tents and stuff set up. It seemed like everybody wanted to get this spot. So there was a log that was sitting right here. So I just drug it across to let people know like, hey, seat's taken. But I'm gonna go on a little walk later. I don't know if you've ever camped by yourself, but it's, uh, it could feel a little weird, mainly because if you've never done it, you're used to camping with people and talking to people all the time. I haven't done it in several years, but it's it's really nice. It's nice to kind of sit and just think about stuff. I bring a notebook and I write all my ideas down that I have and just listening to the river. This is kind of a form of meditation. Not to get real deep on you guys or anything, but that's just that's how I how I see it. So I'm gonna put this down, and do some fishing, and I'll catch back up with you later. This is that cool bridge. We went over it earlier. I walked over here a little earlier and then I got about in the middle of the bridge and it popped really loud. Just settling, creaking, whatever, but I was like, whoa. It's the water just dripping off these rocks. Well, I made it back to camp. About a two mile hike or so. Not too bad. Just get the blood flowing a little bit. About to get my fire started and get some dinner going.
So I've got my jet boil here. And I'm gonna make the pad thai. This one comes with a little packet of peanuts and some peanut butter and some seasoning. And you put all that inside here when you pour the water in. It's actually really delicious if you like pad thai. Yeah. Some smooth operator peanut butter. It's good stuff. Some peanuts. I got that smoke coming right in my face right now. True lime. And some seasoning. This is new. I don't remember seeing this before. Let's see. Two and a quarter cups. So two cups because it always gives you too much, tells you too much. Go ahead and get the jet boil fired up. Peanut butter in there. Shoot, water's about boiling. Sometimes jet boils too fast. Let's see how this peanut butter tastes. All right, indicated, we got our rapid boil here. Pour in our water. Grab my spoon. Now we let it sit for 15 minutes. Moment of truth here with the backpackers pantry pad thai. Can you see that in there? Got some peanuts. It's just, it's pad thai. Going along with a, a little something. And a nice fire. The sound of the river. I'm gonna sleep good tonight. So the first thing you do is tear the top of this off or cut it. I'm gonna enjoy this. No way I'm gonna eat it all. That's like two and a half pounds of food. <laughs> Little noodles. I put the sriracha and the lime salt in it. It's delicious. Ooh, my pants are getting warm. It's a great day. Thank you guys for joining me eat this, hang out until it gets good and dark, probably turn in early so I can get up early and probably head home. It's a good fire. I'm going to let it burn down a little bit and then spread it out and hit the sack. Hopefully there'll be enough coals here for the morning. basically right up against the water and it's all rock around me so not worried about it going anywhere well time to call it a night I'm gonna crawl in my tent and I'll see you in the morning Starbucks coffee, but this this instant coffee is actually really good. I'll make real coffee when I'm camping as well. I just for this trip, quick overnighter by myself. The instant coffee works, tastes good, gets the job done. Morning. We got my oatmeal, we got my coffee, we got a fire, we got the river. And this is a good morning. So let me show you a quick little tidbit on this Garmin 66i. 
So the Garmin 66i is a GPS, handheld GPS with maps. As you can see, it's got maps on it. The cool thing about it is they've integrated their inReach technology into it where you have an SOS button here. And it does everything that the, Gar the Garmin inReach regular does, or the inReach Explorer does. One of my favorite things about it is, is you can go to messages and you have all of your messages that you can send two-way messaging. My favorite part about it is you Bluetooth it to your phone and even though I'm in airplane mode with no service, I can send text messages just as if, as if I was texting normally. And you have all your, you can save all of your contacts. It does give you a different phone number when it comes through on the other end, but you can send your location, you can send customized messages, you can send messages that are predetermined, and it's, it's just really neat, and it's very fast. It's almost as fast as sending just regular text messages with regular phone service. So I'll do a full review on this Garmin 66i in another video. I just wanted to kind of show you this communication device that I use to talk to family and friends when I'm out here in the middle of nowhere with no service, just to let everybody know that I'm okay. So check it out. So I'm getting ready to pack up here. I've got my rain fly drying over there. Those are really heavy dew last night and it was soaking wet. The sun's just about to peek through the mountain here so it should dry it out fairly quick, but it's a really good night. It's a lot of fun. For some of you, I'm sure you're like, well, you were by yourself, how fun could it have been? But it's pretty nice, honestly. So I'm getting ready to So I'm getting ready to pack up the sleeping bag. Last night it was oh 37, I think, the lowest I saw it get. Maybe got a little colder. But sleeping bag did great what I like about it too is that it breathes really well so you don't wake up with that clammy feeling in the morning and then all you do is just open it up and it really airs out and gets, gets if it is damp at all from your moisture from your body uh, it dries out really quick and then we just take it and stuff it in here and pack it up I really like this stuff sack because you literally just stuff it down in there it's got a hard piece here and a kind of this rubbery layer here. Roll it up at least three times. And you see all that air in there. On the bottom, it has this material. It's called a, I think it's like an event. Yeah. And it allows air to go out, but not water to go in. Pretty cool probably ask yourself why do you want a waterproof bag when your panniers are waterproof mainly because you just never know what might happen and if you drop your bike into a creek or a river crossing and somehow your panniers were a tear and you get water in it and, it, and then your sleeping bag is wet that really crappy event just got way worse so I want, at the end of the day, literally at the end of the day, I want to be able to climb into my sleeping bag and be comfortable. So once you get it all packed in there, you literally, literally just kind of, sometimes I put my knee into it, it presses all, a lot more air out, and then you just cinch it down. Though this sleeping bag doesn't pack down as small as some of the ones I've owned in the past, the trade-off is it's really warm and nice and cozy. I could probably get it a little bit smaller, but my panniers are pretty empty, so it doesn't really matter. Let's go put it away. much for joining me and clicking on this video and hanging out here to the end. I think
thank you for all your support you guys give the channel uh, my subscriber count has jumped up quite a bit the last couple months and I like it to believe just because I'm putting out better content so if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up make sure and hit that subscribe button down in the bottom right corner and that bell icon that way you know when new videos like this are released also if you'd like to support the channel more than just views and you'd like to do either a one-time or a monthly donation check out the channel page in the top right corner and click that PayPal donation button. Every single donation is put into a separate account and goes directly back into the channel to improve these videos. Once again, I appreciate all your comments and all the support. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.